All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the July 5th Friday Mastermind. Uh, hope everybody had an awesome 4th of July. Go America. I know I had a had a great 4th and just so grateful uh, to live in this country and also so grateful to be in this industry. Uh, and, and, and while it is a challenging uh, time in the industry and there's massive change going on, I'm, I'm super grateful for that. And I do think that most people that make the most of change, like the change we're having in the market right now, they're the kind of people that are grateful for change. So uh, if you're on this call, it's the day after a pretty big holiday and a kind of a four day weekend. So you're, you're, you are a mortgage nerd. Uh, you can't steal that trademark though, from the, the original mortgage nerd, right, Deb? You guys There's have been that lots who have tried. Lots yeah. who have tried, but very few succeed. Yeah, don't don't try it, guys. You know, yeah. it's not something that you would have put on marketing anywhere. Uh, all right, before we kick off the topic, um, what's up, Mr. Booksman? You know, I uh, just like you, I'm just thrilled to be here. I had a great uh, fourth unplugged with the family and I just had to uh, not working today. So I had to pop on for at least uh, a few minutes to say hello. I love uh, anytime I can learn from Tim and Scott. I want to do that. And of course, you know, missed you and Deborah and the rest of all of you. So wanted to uh, jump on here. But I feel like uh, these are, you know, whether you're here live, right, then you are right. You're you're super committed, obviously, to um, this business and winning at a time where I think it's really hard to win. It doesn't feel good um, unless you have some momentum. So I, I applaud you for being here on a Friday morning live after a holiday looking for some momentum, as well as those of you who are watching this on video. And that just tells me that you are here to win in the second half of 2024. Deborah, anything you want to say before we get into the topic at hand? Just the opportunity that I know we're going to dive in deeper today. It's such, um, it, it is a, a lot of change and it's, it's an opportunity if you maximize the change. And that's what I love. I've seen a little bit of what Scott and Tim have been working on behind the scenes and it's been super successful and it's a way to really start opening at least the dialogue and conversations with your agents. Cause let's face it, there's going to be about the same amount of homes bought and sold this year from what they think, but who knows if the compensation is going to remain the same. And so how are you adding value to your partners? Are you hosting workshops or not? Um, are you having those conversations? And if you need help having those conversations, that's what today's class is going to be all about. So I'm excited and I always enjoy seeing Tim and Scott. I do too. I do too. Well, before I bring in our special guests, I want to Here's the frame I want to create around today's call. Um, and Todd, you said something like it's really hard to win in this market. And and I am going to debate a little bit about that because if your name is Denise Donahue, she's winning in this market and, and actually crushing it. If, you're, if your name is Daniel Saw, who I interviewed uh, last week, he is crushing it, picking up market share. Uh, it's already done over 200 loans as a team, you know, his personal team. And and then the 40 loan officers that he leads is almost seven loans a loan officer. And so if you're if you're doing the right things, you know, and part of doing the right things is having the right value proposition. And and then one of the things Daniel saw said is, you know, be able to communicate your value proposition in a in a really powerful way, and then be able to execute on your value proposition. And so we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about how how um, Tim is creating value props with realtors. That's going to be a big topic today is talking about his workshop. Um, but before I do that, I want to play a clip from the interview with Daniel Saw. just like it's less than a minute, but I want to tee this up. And then Tim, as we bring you on stage, talk about your value prop, talk about how you're helping realtors. Scott, you know, I think you and I both fit in the bucket of helping lenders execute on a value prop. And so we'll talk a lot about what is the right value prop and then how to execute it. But let's check this out. Daniel saw this is a clip. His full interview will be in the link down below. But let's let's just play this. For anyone that didn't hear it, um, it's important that you hear this. And for those of you who did hear it, uh, it's important to hear it again. Here we go. The number one value proposition to a consumer is that you help them get a house. So what is the number one value proposition for a realtor to a consumer? Same thing. They help get a house. And so to us, right, when it comes to the value proposition to the realtor, how do we support realtors in helping a client get a house? 
if we do it by two, by doing two things really well. Number one, we need to get people excited about buying a home. Mortgage rates are high, home values are high. So how do you convey the opportunity as to building equity? What does it mean to be a homeowner? How does that get people excited, right? And so you gotta have a, a process to get people excited about buying a home. And then you have to have a process on how you coach your buyers on different ways to win against multiple offer scenarios. So my value proposition to realtors right now is when they send a client over, we're going to get them super excited about buying a home and we're going to coach them on what it takes to win. So, and and I, I had a, a text chat back and forth with Denise Donahue, the mortgage nerd after this. And she's like, that's pretty much what I do. Now she has a third and I help them pick the right loan strategy or the right mortgage strategy. So she's got kind of a, a three tier help get them really excited about home ownership, help them win in multiple offer situations and help them pick the right mortgage strategy. And, and so guys, that, that is the value prop that, that wins in this market. It's simple. A third grader could repeat that. A sixth grader could repeat that. Um, but now executing, it's a whole nother thing. So I'm going to bring in Tim Lamb, uh, the way this whole conversation started is Scott Nicholson and I were talking. I think everybody in this community knows Scott is a you know former top producer. He's now the the co-founder and CEO of Lender Marketing Platform, an incredible tech platform that is helping both lenders and realtors deliver on their value proposition in the market. Um, and he he was telling me the story about Tim, and I was like, holy shit, we we got to get a call going. And we gotta, we gotta, we gotta unpack this. So, Tim, if you wouldn't mind, it's been a long time since I've interviewed you. Would you just, for anyone that's hearing from you for the first time, let us know a little bit about your practice and what market you're in? Uh, sure, Dave. Thanks so much, uh, Scott, for uh, forcing me on this call. Dave, thanks for having me on the call. Looking forward to sharing. Uh, I'm actually in the Cedar Rapids, Iowa market, so I'm in the Midwest uh and uh transitioning back into being a full uh fledged loan officer for a while i took a step back and was a uh, slightly producing manager now getting back full-time into uh loan origination so looking forward to getting back into the full game yeah go go hawks yeah and uh and and what was your best year at producing you know like what what's what are some of the bigger years you've had as a producer I would say on average, Dave, I'm typically about 120 to 130 transactions in the COVID years when everything was crazy. I think I was put, I pushed 280 one year. Uh, so yeah. doing, doing all right. Yeah. And so guys, first of all, anybody that can close over hundred loans a year has a winning value proposition. He's a grandmaster mortgage coach. So he's always been an advisor. He's a first home IQ ambassador. You know, he's got a real heart for education and is always one with education. And anyways, well, it's awesome having you back. Uh, still, I'm sure as a player coach, but I know you were were more of a, a coach than a player. So, so tell us tell us what you're doing. Tell us how you're helping realtors in this NAR settlement period. Sure. So I'll give a little background here. So um, about two months ago, give or take, I had the honor of going and working on the state of Iowa realtor board task force to try to figure out how this transition was going to happen with NAR. So we literally sat around in a room for three to four hours with appraisers, title companies, attorneys, other lenders, investors, all the leadership in, in the whole state of Iowa. Uh, and we talked for three and a half hours to try to figure out how this thing is going to come together. Uh, and when I left that meeting, I left the meeting going, holy cow, this we got a lot of work to do, right? Like, how do all these pieces come together? Well, how are we going to transition to having this buyer agreement signed? And how does that impact the pre-qualification all the way through closing? And when does it need to be disclosed? All these things, like literally all these stuff as I'm driving home, I'm like, all right, I got to be uh, the most valuable mortgage advisor to my agent partners uh, to be able to get this started. Because uh, we're taking a little bit of a leap here, Dave. Our state of Iowa legislature said we're not waiting till August to do all the NAR stuff. We're starting as of July 1. So we're literally game time with the buyer's agreement as of July 1. So I've been having a bunch of these conversations around how to position uh, the buyer's agreement. How does the lender play into this type of thing? Uh, and it's been interesting to have these conversations because everybody looks at it completely differently. Right. We've got agents that are like, oh, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to get it signed and everybody will be signing it. Other agents are like, what's NAR? Like, I don't even what? Like J July 1? What's going on? Like literally what's going on? And then we got other agents that are like really nervous about this. So 
first thing I would say as you're having these conversations with your agent partners, be empathetic, right? This has got complete curveball for them to try to figure out how they're going to position it. And you got to ask a lot of questions. As Phil Jones says, stay curious for as long as you possibly can to figure out what position they are in. Are they freaked out about this thing? Are they like, no big deal? Are they like, I don't even know what's going on? Like figure that stuff out before you start positioning anything in the market. So what I was doing is I was having, I've had a 31 one-on-one -on -one agent conversations in the last 30 days. Uh, and I was just asking them this, about the NAR. And I tried to figure out all these different questions that I was asking. Uh, and I had a one person I met with was a sales manager. And we got into this NAR conversation. He's like, can you come present this information to my team? And I'm like, absolutely, let's do it. So a week later, we jumped in the conference room and there was nine uh, real estate agents in the office. He was the sales manager of all these other eight agents in the office. Um, and if you want me to Dave, jump into it, Dave, I can definitely do kind of what we started with and how we got the thing positioned and so forth. Yeah, but well, I think before we do that, um, Scott, you 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 know really advocated that we would do this call, and there were some things. You know, one of the things that caught my attention was that they went live on July first. So I thought, like, what great leadership to the community to bring someone from a state and market that like is going through this. Like, what a great prep for everyone else. What were some of the things that you want to make sure come out in the story, Scott, today? Yeah, that, that's it. So I think, you know, Tim's kind of going first, right? All right, Tim, what's happening out there on the front lines? And so it was really interesting, you know, in our calls, in our community to hear what Tim is doing. I'm like, holy smokes, you know, and that's kind of related story. So number one, Tim's out there because they've already implemented. And then I want him to share some of the discussions are like really big head scratchers and they validate what I kind of knew what was going on at a bigger scale across the country. Um, and I don't want to steal Tim's thunder on this part. Yeah. Well, I actually stole a little of his thunder. Anybody that watched the Daniel <laughs> Saw, uh conversation, I, I shared like highlights from what I heard and, and Daniel, I saw him take notes. And at the end of the call, like him and I were debriefing offline. He's like, I'm going to be in that call. Like, I can't wait to hear that myself. So you got a lot of people watching this call. Um, Todd, before we kind of go into that, anything you want to call out here? Because I know you're going to jump a little on the early side. You're on mute, rookie. Yeah, when that happens, I hate when that happens. Um, you know, I, I just want to call out the fact that Tim made had 31 conversations over the last 30 days with real estate agents specifically around this topic. And I feel like, you know, we talked about winning in this market and gaining momentum. The only way you're going to do that is to talk to more agents and find out what are the agents that you are working with and that you are trying to target. What are, what's, what's up with them. And, um, and I love it, Tim. I mean, I think that's really one of the reasons that you're here and that you've, uh, you know, got the, position you have in the industry and the reason that people will have you come in and present to their folks is because you're actually not just here studying, you're actually taking action as well. So I would encourage the rest of you to think, how many conversations have you had with agents specifically around this topic in the last 30 days? And um, and then how how can you be more uh, strategic? I, I love it. John Cheplak sent out an email recently and he said that we don't have a time management problem. We have a choice management problem, right? You are all um, have these uh, certain number of minutes every day to make choices around what you do. And I think this is really an, an easy conversation to have. And I would kind of point you back. We did that interview maybe three Fridays ago with Jeremy, and he put up a TCA about um, that he's sending to agents to show them how he's addressing the commission piece. And it's a game changer. It's a super easy in for you if you're looking for an easy way to get in front of uh, agents and have the conversation is um, doing that TCA, texting it to him with a video, and then calling them right afterwards and saying, hey, I want to just send you a, a total cost analysis, explain to him what it is, and then um, walk them through it and say, hey, this is how I'm proactively addressing this ahead of August, except for unless you're in Iowa. Apparently, they're way proactive. They're doing it in July. So two two things I want to pull out of that, and then Tim, get ready to share, you know, like what you're doing. But But, you know, first of all, if you're on this call, and you're a loan officer, and you cannot do what Jeremy's doing. Uh, and by the way, it's not just Jeremy. I mean, Daniel's doing it. Dan Keller's doing it. Just about every top mortgage coach is able to show commission options, NAR commission options at, to the buyer and show them that, hey, if if the seller pays it, this is what it looks like. And, and then multiple strategies. And if you can't do that, 
like you're behind. And if you're a producing manager on this call and you're not doing that, you're not leading by example. And if, and if you haven't tested all of your loan officers to make sure they are, can do that, you're not preparing them to have a competitive advantage. So I just clearly want to make sure that is stated. And then, and then real quick, here's where I'd love some audience participation. Todd called out the fact that Tim has had 31 one-on-ones and I would love if you're on this call, how many one-on-ones with realtors have you had in the past 30 days, last month, month of June? Like this is the, you know, just a, not the first business day, but we're in the first week of July. How many one-on-ones did you have with realtors? Share in audience. And then if you've been doing one-to-many, just guess how many one-to-many's. I want separate, like one-on-ones, that's one number. And, and if you'll share it, that would be cool. But whether you share it or don't share it, write that number down right now. And then I'm going to push everybody. And what is your goal for July? How many one-on-ones are you going to have? And how many one to minis are you going to have? Deborah Bird, anything you want to say before we move to Tim? Yes. So Tim, in order to have those 31 meetings, is there anything you can share with the audience? Because I know this is going to be asked probably at some point. What did you say on that initial, whether it was call, text, is there anything you did or have a pattern of what allowed you to then earn that one-on-one -on -one meeting? Uh, I, I dialogued around, it was a lot of text messages and a lot of phone calls, dialogued around the NAR settlements. And my question a lot of times was, how is your agent partner positioning you to get that buyer's agreement signed? You mean lender partner? How's your lender partner? Sorry. How's your lender partner advising, helping you get that buyer's agreement signed? And and most responses I got was nothing. We haven't even talked about it, right? So I'm like, all right, would it be helpful if I was able to have that conversation during the buyer's consultation on the lending side of things to position that buyer's agreement for you? And everybody said yes. Uh, and I'm like, oh, let's jump into Zoom. Let's go meet for coffee, whatever it was. So I was leading with the NAR and how they're going to the lender agent partner is going to be so much more valuable now, how that's going to be impactful for them. Thank you. That's, that's kill her. So first of all, that, that was great. Greg, thanks for sharing six realtor one-on-ones in the past 20 days with a goal of three a day in July. Let's go, let's get after it. Also, uh, I think it was about 30 minutes into the Jeremy Forcier call. He, you know, I asked him, Hey, how are you getting meetings? What's your script? And, and it was killer. So we'll put a link down below. I'll actually call out where that script started. Although I, re I mean, if there were, I mean, well, I don't know. I've done so many great interviews lately, but the three that really stand out for me is the most recent one with Daniel, uh, the one with Denise Donahue, mortgage nerd, um, a week ago, and the one with Jeremy. Uh, they really are just extraordinary um, pieces of content. And, and by the way, all of those interviews will be available at the trustengine.com forward slash 10x page. So if you go to that, that's a page for managers and those those videos will be there. All right, Tim, we are in the second quarter of this call now. I think we've set up the topic. Tell us tell us, you know, exactly what you're doing. Perfect. All right. So uh, we set up a meeting with this sales manager for a local brokerage here. There's eight of us in the office or in the in their conference room. I went to their office uh, and I only brought two things. I brought two TCAs that I'm going to share with you guys here in a little bit. Uh, and everybody knew that it was about the NAR settlement. So I just set up the room like, all right, we're going to get into this NAR conversation, but I want you to take out a piece of paper right now and pretend I'm the buyer and you have to give me your value proposition for me to choose you. Out of the eight people that are in this room, why would I choose you? And I just had them, everybody get out a piece of paper. They wrote down their stuff. I gave them two or three minutes. I'm like, just don't think too hard. Just bulletproof why I would choose you. What, what do you bring to the table? What is your value that everyone keeps talking about? Bringing it to the table. I gave them two or three minutes. And then I just picked one of the agents. And I said, all right, I'm going to use you for the example. Let's start first. What was the number one thing that you put on your list? And uh, I think it was experience, right? So I said, awesome, experience is good. And then I asked the rest of the room, how many people had experience on their list? Raise your hand. 
Everybody raised their hand. Everybody's like, there's some level of experience that everybody has, right? Like I'm a new person, so I'm experienced. Or I've done 100 transactions, I'm experienced. So there was all experience. So then I stayed with that same exact agent. And I said, all right, give me your second uh, value reason why I should choose you. Uh, and they one of, them, one of the answers was hardworking. So I'm like, all right, how many else in the room was hardworking? Raise your hand. And everybody else raised their hand and the, you know, like everybody was raising their hand as we go through this. So I went through like four or five of these things and everybody had the exact same things written down on their screen or a variation of it. Uh, and I just positioned it to be able to say like, all right, look around the room, guys. Like everyone's saying the exact same thing, right? We've got to figure out how you're going to be unique and how you can be a little bit different and the experience thing is awesome, but how do we package it? And what is the process that goes along with it to make sure that you're stepping outside of the standard, normal, commoditized uh, real estate agent? So that was kind of the kickoff to the presentation, Dave. Love it. Love yeah. it. Any questions on that from anyone? Yeah, I, I'll jump on that. I, I think it's a great opener, right? To really like, Oh shit, you got the same one? Well, so do I, so do I. And it, I think it's really going to frame what you're going to teach them and have them be open to new concepts uh, and strategies. Yeah, really, really good point. And the the coaching point I want to put to that, I think, you know, anybody that's been through Renee Rodriguez's Amplify, you know, there's there's like a, a lesson or a story and you have something that you want people to do, but the frame, how you frame it, in many cases matters more than the story. So if, if, if Tim literally would have just come in and say, Hey, you know, I've interviewed all these people and this is the most common value prop and here's the best value prop. Like the way he framed it. And to your point, the way he got people to participate as a group, um, I mean, 10 X is the emotional and intellectual impact. So just good, good reminder to all of us. Thanks for calling that out, Scott. And I, so, I think that yeah, keep Dave, going. part of that, they part of that came from the 31 conversations that I had leading up to this meeting, right? Because I had asked a lot of agents, what's going to happen with NAR, right? And just left it like that. And then like 35 minutes later, they were done talking about what's going to happen with NAR, right? Like they just completely took over the conversation. And I was trying to get back in and control the conversation. It just wasn't working. So I had to figure out different questions and different opportunities to be able to get that done. And you kept saying on all your calls, Dave, like, here's the same things that everyone's going to say. And I'm like, all right, that's awesome. But like, how do we frame it and how do we position it for them to be able to look in a room and go, all right, I'm now the same as everybody else, right? Like now, I, instead of just first opening the door, now I first have to show the value, right? Like, why are you committing to me to help me leverage the deal? So we're moving back into that skills-based market. And I was trying to help them figure out, all right, you're the same as everybody else in the grand scheme of things. So if you don't dive into this and figure out how you're going to be uniquely different, be able to put it together. So then we just spent some time kind of talking about like what makes you unique? Uh, what visuals can you put together? Uh, I asked them, how many times have you practiced your buyer presentation? And as the sales manager in the office, I'm sure he wanted to hear that answer, right? And people were like, well, I do a little bit and I kind of do this way or whatever. And I'm like, all right, do you have a formal presentation like you would have a presentation if you had a listing agreement? And some people said yes, some people said no, some people said it's in the works and so forth. I'm like, all right, we got to make this as visual as we possibly can, because for you to talk it out isn't going to be as impactful as if you can display it and show proof and show reasons why you're the natural choice for them as their agent. So we talked through presentation stuff. We talked about uniqueness. We talked about how to position your experience as being unique, that it's just not the same experience as everybody else. We talked about leveraging their reviews on social media or on Zillow or on Google, whatever me. We just kind of went around the room and talked about all of this stuff. And I can just feel and sense in the room they're like, okay, I've got a little bit of a plan now. Like I've got a little bit of what I need to do in order to put this together. Uh, and then I was, as I was kind of wrapping up this beginning session, I'm like, all right, who are you going to practice on? Are you going to role play this with your sales manager as he's sitting to the left of me? Are you going to role play it with each other? 
or are you going to practice this on your potential clients? And I hopefully that was an eye opener for them because I'm like, all right, you're either practicing with the clients that you're going to be working with, or you can get this dialed in. And I just made a statement to him and I said, all right, whatever you think it's going to sound like in your head, when you open up your mouth, it's going to be completely different, right? You're going to stumble over it. You're not going to feel good about it. Then you're going to be like, oh, nah. so I said, you got to practice this a lot because it's no different now than a listing agreement, a listing strategy than it is on the buyer side of things. So we just spent a bunch of time talking through that and kind of point things out and giving them some confidence that it can be done, that they can separate themselves from everybody else uh, in the presentation. And then I, then I just asked them a simple question. So do you think it's going to be easier or more complicated after July 1 to write an offer with your buyers? And everybody said more complicated, right? Because I got now I got to reach out to a listing agent and figure out what the commission is going to be and talk through all those details. It's gonna be it's gonna be there's some extra steps and extra hoops to be able to put it together. And I just asked them, has your current lending partner helped you position that conversation and how those options could look for you uh, going forward with those conversation? And we kind of got into a conversation, Dave, around like the momentum of the sale. Like we were talking about how the loan officer, loan advisor can bring up the buyer's agreement and strategize around how that's not going to be the hurdle once we get to writing the offer to be able to put it together. So I just asked him, would it be okay if I shared with you the five ways that the commission is potentially going to work after July 1 in the state of Iowa? And they're like, yes, we've been talking about this. We've been hearing about this. Let's walk through that. So that's when I jumped into the TCA. Uh, anything anybody wants to add now that I kind of rolled into kind of phase two or step two that I kind of worked on there? No, I'm loving it. I mean, this is incredibly valuable. I think uh, if you're watching this and you're getting value, give us a reaction. Let us know what you think about this so far. Uh, remember, audience, any questions, comments, put them in chat. Uh, yeah, keep it rolling. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to jump into what I shared uh, with the agent. So again, uh, the only thing that I brought was I utilized their PowerPoint TV in their room, and I just pulled up the TCA, all right? So I'm going to share my screen here and get to the TCA. Give me one second. So here is the TCA that I showed, all right? So first of all, there was a mistake that I made that I want to point out to everybody. This is the screen that I initially showed. I pulled this up on the screen and showed all four of these options at the same time. And then Susie was saying this and Jimmy was saying this and they were all talking about this. So what I would love for you to do, Dave, is I want to show everybody if you go into the, the analysis presentation screen here is you can check these boxes to be only be able to show uh, the limited number that you want to be able to show. So, oops, get to the right presentation here. Where is that? There we go. So now I just started with one presentation and we can have a conversation around this. So column one in my TCA was same as normal. NAR has not happened. There's still seller agreement, compensation. It's in the MLS. All this stuff has happened. This is the normal scenario that's going to happen. Then I said, all right, option one financing, went back to my TCA, clicked into the finance option, Click my next button here. And then now that TCA popped up one additional scenario for to go through. So that way I can keep everybody focused on this one strategy to be able to put it together. So I talked about how we can potentially finance this into the scenario. And I just walked them through the same loan amounts or the same purchase price, but now instead of borrowing 270, they're borrowing 279. And then we talked about the payments and we talked about the cash to close being exactly the same. So option one for me was walking through financing it into the mortgage. So instead of putting 10% down, now they're putting 7% down or 8% down, whatever it is, and changing that structure. And, but most importantly, keeping the cash to close exactly the same, slightly increasing the mortgage payment, right? Because they're borrowing more money, but they didn't have to bring any additional uh, money out of pocket. So we walked through that, made sure that made sense. Talk through, is this a seller concession? No, it's not. It's just changing the loan amount. Like literally the details of how we wanted to put it into the contract. We walked through that so they understood that. Then I went back and I just added the third column into the transaction and kept coming back to this same exact presentation and stacking on top of 
the options that are going to potentially you're going to need to do in this transaction. So column number three was this financing into the mortgage. So the only thing that changed here was we increased the purchase price um, and got it to 309 now instead of the 300. If we've got enough value potential in there, then we can bump it up to the 309. And the cash to actually the payment went down a little bit versus financing it in, and the cash to close went up slightly because we're financing a little bit more into the loan. Again, more conversations around that. How do we protect it with the appraisal? How do we do all the details that go along with that? We had great conversations around individually putting this together. So it's kind of stacking their knowledge one by one as we went into it. Then we went into the last column, uh, which is the pay cash type of scenario. Uh, oops, clicked on the wrong TCA there. Uh, and then we went into this paid cash. So we talked about the buyer paying cash for your compensation uh, to be able to put this together. And then obviously we've got a much higher cash to close scenario uh, and the payment's exactly the same. So I wanted to get them the idea of how we can put this together. And most importantly, I wanted to show how important your relationship is with your mortgage advisor going forward because the consumer doesn't know any of these things. The loan or the more, uh, the realtor doesn't know any of these things either. We're in control of this entire conversation around this. And as I got to the end of this, then obviously we talked a little bit about where if it's split, right? If the buyer's paying X and the listing agent's only paying a certain amount, then we went into, this is gonna be a variation of one of these three, right? They may pay a little bit of cash, they may finance it in, they may be able to put it together. So we talked about all of the potential scenarios that could go together. And it was a very strong conversation to be able to position the mortgage advisor as the key to the financing and how we can put this together. And I was calling it my guaranteed commission program is what I was calling it. So how do we position this into the financing and into the conversation to be able to put it together, um, be able to done. So Dave, you wanna add anything there? Well, first of all, super powerful. I love, I mean, you're just a wonderful storyteller. Uh, I wanna remind people the way he layered it you can not only do that from your computer, like he did, he's showing it on his laptop, he's going back and forth. You could make that same ad from a mobile phone or from uh, an iPad. So I would just tell you guys, super slick, making a complex concept simple. Also, um, next week, we're starting a new playlist in the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel called Training Videos. So the, you know, the whole 10X page that we've created, Trust Engine, dot com forward slash 10 X is for producing managers to be great player coaches, kill it with advice and coach others. And we're going to make an edited version of what Tim just said, uh, along with a lot of other, what we just call um, training clips. So there will be a training clip and this will be a piece of micro content in that next week. Scott, anything you want to call out there and Deb, anything I'll let Scott go first and Deb. I mean, he just laid out the reason why I thought it was important for him to be in this community and share kind of what we're doing in our community in this community. It's important. I think how just little stuff, just how he stacks it, because agents kind of get overwhelmed with financing. So just kind of spoon feed them, so to speak, just one, two, three. Also, um, how he's um how he's re how they realize that the eight of the LO, and this is really important. I've been saying this since the Missouri case went down. The LO is going to be leading the way here. And if I think the successful people that transition will have partnered with one of the better LOs in their marketplace, period. Because they can't, right? They're not going to have these difficult conversations. And if Tim Lamb is not coaching them and helping present. They're not going to have successful, you know, signed buyer broker agreements, period. Yeah, love love that. Uh, this is Deborah Bird. Anything you want to say before I ask well, Tim the next question? Well, is that a new thing, Dave, where you can check and you can layer on? Is that something no. new that y'all recently added? No? Oh, no, what but, a, but we don't I've never train. seen anyone visually storytell in that way before until just now. So I loved that visual aspect. So I think sometimes people can get really overwhelmed and they're trying to, you know, analyze everything themselves when they see all the columns. So I had no idea that you could do that. So great job, Tim. And then my, my question is, and this is for everyone who's on the call, at what point does a lender have to bring up the compensation dialogue? Because don't you have to verify funds? Like when you're issuing a prequel, 
don't, wouldn't you need to know, like if they have a buyer's agreement signed, but then the seller doesn't pay, or is that something that people aren't going to address and just wait till it happens? Anything, Tim, that you're doing from that standpoint? That was one of the things that came out of the task force piece uh, as we were studying with everybody was like, how do we communicate that buyer's agreement has been signed? Uh, and we just, I've talked with every agent, like as soon as that thing's signed, I got to know right away because I've got to figure out what your compensation is going to be and then how I can have that conversation with the client, right? Almost mm -hmm. that same presentation that I put together there for you guys, I got to have that during the the borrower consultation with my clients to be able to say, all right, this could be your worst case scenario from a cash close perspective. And this is the best case scenario, right? When it comes to the commission side of things. So I think I'm telling every agent, as soon as that thing is signed, I need to get a copy of it because I need to factor that into my pre-qualification. And to that point, Deb, the, the next thing that I was talking about in that meeting was, I think there's going to be a new piece that comes into play here. And that is what we call, what I'm calling a pre-offer phone call between the agent, between the buyer, and between myself to refresh the total cost analysis, to be able to say, this specific property is paying X. Here is the numbers that's going to work for this house. So I'm calling it the pre-offer call. And I think it's going to be five to 10 minutes. I'm going to be updating that mortgage coach. And what I'm telling my clients, uh, agent partners, is I want to keep the momentum of the sale going. I don't want you to get excited, find the right house, and then put the brakes on and figure out how the financing is going to work. I want to have that just as, okay, we're going from lane A to lane B. We've already talked about all this. We've already had conceptually put it together and they understand it. Now we're just moving over to lane B. This is what the numbers look like for the specific property. And now let's move on with the sale, right? If we, I think if we start adding these structures and these pieces at the end, I think now buyers are going to be like, well, I wasn't prepared for that. I'm nervous about that. I don't want to do that. Like I'll, I'll take two days. And then in some markets, that house has been sold three times in two days. So it's never going to work, right? So I want to keep the momentum of the sale going with having this pre-offer call to set up the financing, to structure it, to have the client have clarity and confidence that they're good moving forward with that specific property. Mm, love, sense. love, love that. And uh, Paul Hurley, Hurley, real quick, I'll think about if I do a separate video, but you know, to answer your question, you know, have a laptop that connects to an HDMI outlet is easy and, and be ready to, you know, be able to do, um, you know, Apple air. I mean, a lot of realtors have an Apple TV or some type of air connection, but I'll, I'll integrate that into some interviews and try to get that answered. So Tim, we are, you know, almost done with, you know, the third quarter. What, what else are you doing to deliver on this, you know, ex educational experience to realtors? I think we continued uh, after that. We had a great meeting talking through all these details, structuring it through and so forth. Uh, and it was eye-opening to me to be able to see where everyone was kind of in the room, right? Like they, a lot of people felt they were leaning into it. And then we really got into a conversation around how's NAR going to work? So I asked them a question like, all right, how, what do you think the percentage of people are going to be that stay normal, right? They're paying both sides of the, con as from a listing side of things, listing agreements, how many people are going to say, yep, I'm going to stay status quo. I'm going to keep paying the full buyer's commission and the seller's commission. It's all going to be fine. Uh, and then what's that number look like compared to the people that are going to be like, nah, I think I'm going to try to do it for a little bit less. And we kind of talked around that idea of what that looks like. And the consensus kind of came out maybe to an 80, 20 rule, right? Like 80% of the people are going to have strong listing agents that are going to have that strategy put together to say, hey, we got to pay both sides of this compensation to be able to have the biggest buyer pool. But 20% of the people are going to say, no, nah, I'm going to try to change this a little bit. And my question to them was, how are you going to get paid your full compensation, right? Like if you, have you considered what it looks like if now you're getting one third less commission on all of your transactions? So we talked around, again, going back to that value add, being partnered with your loan officer to be able to put it together. And we had like another conversation around them conceptually thinking about taking one third less of their pay to do the same job. And it was a very eye-opening conversation because I don't think anyone had thought of it as one third of their pay. And I specifically said, look back to last year. If you had to take one third less comp because of this, would you be willing to do that? And no, everyone there was like, no, I can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. So it was a great conversation to be able to put that together. Got it. Well, you, you know, 
you're a master bro. And so one person already asked a tech question, you know, is there any other technology you're using or ways in which you're educating these realtors and, and ways that you're helping um, deliver a unified value prop? Because to me, it's super clear that you, you're meeting with lots of realtors, you're, you're helping them get clear on their value proposition and elevate it. Um, you're helping them execute on their value prop. You've shown that. Um, anything else you're doing so that you're a bigger part of their value proposition? I think the only thing, the other thing that comes to mind is we've been talking about, uh, as uh, Phil Jones says, some simple word swaps, right? And we've been having this conversation around removing commission and changing it to compensation, right? Like commission seems like, uh, like it's like this really fancy thing or really expensive or hoity-toity, I'm getting a commission on it, right? But everybody gets compensated for what they do. Dave, you get compensated for having some great tools that puts into the mortgage space world and helps us be better advisors. Scott, same thing with Lender Marketing Platform. You get compensated for doing that, right? But no one ever thinks about it as a commission. So we had a conversation around compensation versus commission was the first thing that we talked about. And some people brought up like professional fee maybe as another solution and so forth. But I'm just like, everybody gets compensated for the work that they do. So I don't know if there's some psychology around that, but I would play around with that as a conversation with your agent partners to be able to do that. And I Dave, you've been talking about this. Dave, you've been talking about this for a while as well. Moving from real estate agent to real estate advisor. Um, yeah. And well, yeah. Well, we need to turn realtors into real estate advisors. So you're, 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 you're having this meeting, you're using mortgage coach, you know, that's a link. Are there any other links or things that you're you're using with the realtor to help them with your value proposition? Yeah, yeah. literally everybody in the group asks, can we have these uh, this presentation? I'm like, absolutely. So then I package it up with lender marketing platform uh, and I'll show my screen here in a side, but I'll tell you exactly what's in there. So number one, there's a main video in there talking through the five different ways that an agent can structure partner with the loan officer, loan mortgage advisor to structure the financing. Then there's a separate piece in there that's the specific TCA that I just shared with you guys. So I've got one, I'll call it summary video in the lender marketing platform, position one, that I wrote out the text to be able to put it together. And then I've got the TCA built in there as well. So they've got a summary and they've got the specific details to be able to put it together. So after so I was done with the meeting, then I had that already built pre ahead of time. And I just texted it to everybody and said, hey, Here's the content that we covered. Let's chat about any questions you have. And then multiple people call back and say, hey, I want to talk about this one more time, talk about this one more time and so forth. So I was I was leading them to have another conversation to be able to put it together. And I'll share with you. Uh, and Dave, what and guys, yeah, get rid, share it. So pull it up anytime. But guys, this is execution. Like if you listen to the interview with Daniel, there's, there's having a killer value prop. And then there's like, how do you execute that value prop? And so... Uh, Hopefully everyone on this already has a mortgage coach. If you don't, there is a button to sign up at the, the 10X page. Uh, but now here's another incredible platform, which everybody knows what a fan I am of Lender Marketing Platform. We've interviewed Scott many a times on it. So tell us what we're looking at and you know explain your strategy with this. So this strategy is very similar to the mortgage coach, where it's a simple link that you can send out via text, via email, whatever you want to do. And you can put all kinds of assets into this to add value to whatever you're doing with your partners. Uh, so again, the top video here is linked directly to my YouTube channel as a private video. And it just summarizes what's going on with the buyer agent commission, the details of how that's potentially going to work. Then I just wrote it out, uh, actually stole this from Scott and hit our group at London Market Platform, just stole it from him and recreated it in my own thing. So I just put together all of the numbers. Uh, and then up on the upper right hand corner here, this little click button, that's that. You click that, that'll open up a TCA that has a second video of me walking through those four scenarios that I put together for you guys uh, that we talked about before. So, so guys, I, I love this because, you know, you can not only have videos, you, if you had a PDF that was relevant, you can have a PDF here. Uh, Mortgage Coach goes in here really nicely. Um, this is just a great way to follow up and educate. What about your thoughts? And I have interviewed a number of loan officers that are um, advocating with realtors that they use the lender marketing platform as their buyer agent presentation, because not only could it have the realtor's 
you know, most of them have either PowerPoint slides, they have some images, but it also helps integrate uh, a mortgage coach experience within the actual listing presentation or the actual buyer's agent's presentation. Is that something you're seeing or you're talking about? It's actually the one of the next trainings I'm going doing for this same group that I just did. They wanted me to come back and help dive more into the buyer presentation. So we're going to dive into that and build it into the lender marketing platform. So that way I can be their partner back to, is it difficult? Is it going to be easier or harder to write an offer in this world? Now let's get this into the lender marketing platform uh, and make sure that we can put this all in one spot. So they have easy content. And I can put my content in there for them to talk through commission so they don't have to because I don't want them to know necessarily all the details of the mortgage side of things, but we can put it together in there for sure. So we'll definitely so, be building out those out. Yeah, so uh, guys, give me give me a little reaction or something in chat if you would like to have Tim come back and do a debrief on that next training where he's actually showing realtors what to do and how to do it. So yeah, hands are raising, thumbs are going up. People, people are digging that. So yeah, maybe we'll we'll do another Friday and we'll we'll really focus on developing and creating, you know, a meeting for that. So this one you did from a value prop standpoint. Um, Scott, I'm gonna bring you in in just a second. I want to see if Deborah Bird has anything she wants to call out here or ask. And then Scott, let's have you, you know, as the product visionary around lender marketing platform, share anything you think is important. Well, that's what I was I was going to ask is I, I feel like sometimes when people watch these, either I get a bunch of questions or DMs, or I'm sure Scott and Tim, you will too. But I think a lot of times people get overwhelmed with how do I visually create something like this, even with just the TCA, like how do I set up the columns? What's the math? How could I then put it into a lender marketing platform? And so full uh, disclaimer, guys, you're going to get a gift if you stay tuned to the very end of this. Scott has a uh, presentation that he's going to gift all of you that is your cheat sheet in your roadmap of how to be a ninja like Tim so that you can feel more confident in your own conversations with the partners. Um, and then the, the next thing is, Tim, do you mind putting that link to your lender marketing platform example in the chat? Because a couple of people were asking for that link, if you're willing to share. Yep, happy to do it. I already gave it to Paul. Paul, go ahead and put it in the, oh, in the good. Okay. group. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we'll we'll share a link to the actual mortgage coach. Although remember, the mortgage coach link is in the lender marketing platform link as well. So so and and also just want to remind you guys, like we're we're doing training every every day of the week. So if you go to this link, trustengine.com forward slash 10x, uh, there's live training. Like if you scroll down, you can sign up. So Deborah said, like, if you don't know how to do the buyer agent TCA, every Wednesday and every Thursday, we train on that. If you're brand new, click here. If you haven't even got on the team yet, you know, sign up. You can get signed up. And then also remember, if you scroll down further, there's videos how to do everything you need to know how to do. Uh, so just as a reminder, there's an ongoing training resource. Um, so Scott, obviously, you, you, that was music to your ears, seeing someone player coach in the market, creating value with your platform. Any any thoughts or anything you want to share, bro? I think, you know, so Tim's such a, you know, professional. I've been writing things down and someone wrote in chat like, hey, I need the recording of this because he was dropping like the pre-offer phone call, which is going to be a big one, right? Because you, be, and let me connect the dot on that one. And I think you should, we should do a whole nother call on presenting NAR offers is a big deal. Because yeah. you're you're shopping blind, right? So you're not going to know what the commission is going to be until the end of the, the house. And so, you know, the momentum of the sale, you know, dr agents dropping commissions in order to get the transaction, a third of that. So, but I think for me, where it got really exciting, obviously, selfishly, is you have the four C's, you have the Daniels, you have the nerds, you have these people coming in here and giving you specifics on the mortgage coach. But now let's take all of that. Let's package it. Now let's present. And that's kind of where I'm excited to kind of take the wheel here a little bit and kind of bring it, bring it home of just showing you what lender marketing platform does. It shows you all of that stuff, package all that stuff to now where you can, Tim's going to go back and show us, you know, his next follow-up meeting. Let's start building buyer presentations, guys. So there's it. Cool. 
any anything i know you have some training and you have some things that you oh want to yeah share oh i have that yeah sorry uh let's share that stuff so i'm going to share it with the community well, show us just... the good scott don't leave show us hanging goods. okay <laughs> So first of all, let me kind of just frame of what LMP can do. And you've, you know, Dave is kind of bringing it up a little bit. There's a lot of different ways. So this is kind of in edit mode. There's a lot of different ways to show buyer compensation. It's right here. Here's the outside looking in. Here are all the TCAs I've created to show the different individual ways to get them paid. And so with LMP, I can bring all those five different TCAs in to showcase. So it's just one strategy at a time, and then you can showcase it all there. Now, behind the scenes and how they're built, just and I'll show you, I'll give you all the goods here in a second, is it's literally just adding a TCA or whatever you want to add. You just add a widget, and then you can bring whatever asset you in or bring it in. Let's say like it's a mortgage coach, for an example. So there's kind of behind the scenes. So with that framework, here's the link I'm gonna give you guys. And so what I did was, this is kind of Tim coming into our community. We do a lot of content, you know, with NAR and the workshops and all that stuff. So he basically is taking this and going out to market. So I've kind of framed um, some of Tim's stuff for you guys. And I'll give a shout quickly to Josh Metal is, you know, like Scott, you know, and, and I'm gonna, what, what all these assets are on this presentation, a little bit of Donald Miller for all of you LOs. Show empathy, I literally gave you a script for your LOs. I showed authority, I gave you all just the little assets that you're gonna need, um, and it's all broken down. Here is Tim Lamb's playbook. First thing he did is establish why you. Second of, of, of collaboration and sharing those partnering with your lenders. I've given you the four buyer questions that an agent, this is something I hear all the time. Hey, Scott, not really worried about it. No, I'm prepared. And these are the four questions that ask any of them, these four or all four, like, haven't really thought of that one. And most of it has to do with our side of the financial aspect of that. And so there's all of Tim's kind of laid out for you guys. And then let me bring this and tie this together. And so the first thing, a little bit of Donald Miller script. Second thing, I gave you buyer agent scripts. So imagine a buyer agent in Tim. Let me ask you a question. How many buyer agents have you responded because they're not being educated properly by a mortgage coach LO that shows the different ways to finance or create or pay commission? How many's response is, I'll just show them 3% listings based it's on the, the side of the agreement? It, it's in the conversation, right? But everybody said, I got to find out from the listing agent, and then I'm going to present back to my clients to be able to say, which one of these listings do you want to see? Full comp, no comp, split comp, and then they've got to make the decision, right? Uh, and I think where you're going is we'd like to be able to present to all of those and say we can show all of these properties with the strategies exactly. that we've talked about before. So that's exactly right. So imagine a LMP slash mortgage coach, educated consumer, right? That the script is we're all great at communication, negotiation, service. We want to help you get all availability to access to all homes, no matter the comp level. And I just kind of paraphrase that script. So take all of this stuff that we're giving you, I'm actually gonna show you um, what a buyer presentation looks like. This is an actual one here, mocked it up just a smidge. You can put any asset right there that could be a keeping current member. With Jeremy Forsey, I keep telling his, he's yelling his name out. We took his PDF, convert it digitally, and these are his buyer needs profile, and then we get into all of the TCAs. We show them the digital offer. We show them the appraisal gap. We show them the different ways to pay compensation. So in the living room, the buyer agent then would bring Tim in and say, hey, that's a great question. What happens if we find a property that's paying low or no commission? And then your TCAs will kind of take over. And Tim, who's not even in the living room, He's going to take over the conversation if that's where they want to go. And then think of this. If the buyer now feels more confident, you know, moving forward, 
what's the repercussions of that? A positive one of a signed buyer broker agreement. That's the whole goal. And so now we're going to establish the relationship and move forward. So what we do really well at LMP, Lender Marketing Platform, is to bring all the assets together. In particular to this topic here is we're going to then bring all of Tim's stuff and your guys' stuff together to get more signed buyer broker agreements in the living room, period. And that's it. So with that, I'm going to take this link. I will copy this and I'll give it to Deb. Would you be the best person for this? I would say Paul, so he can make sure to add it to okay. the YouTube channel as well. But just, can just put just, it in the chat for everyone. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Just put it in chat and uh, drop it in there. Yeah, and we will share this to everyone um, in this live event, and and then of course we'll put this in the the notes. So if you're watching this in YouTube, which most of you are watching this in YouTube, in the show notes are all the links to the actual mortgage coach reports and the link to this. So first of all, Scott, that was massive. I mean, you clearly put some time into that. I, I know um, Tim is very active in your community. If you are not, you know, checking out uh, Lender Marketing Platform, guys, you know, check it out today. I can't recommend it enough. Um, not only as a lender for all the ways that it's been described, but like this is an incredible innovation for real estate agents. And you can be the ones that brought them something that can actually upgrade how they execute their value prop. So I'm going to do a couple closing thoughts and then go around and have everyone, everyone else do the same. So first of all, here, here's, here's my debrief. You know, how many realtors have you met in the last 30 days? And what's your goal for how many you're going to meet over the next 30 days? And what are your one to many goals? How many one to, how many one to many presentations? How many do you want to impact? Um, are you helping agents communicate their value prop? Like not only how they communicate it, role play with them, help them elevate it, uh, make sure you have an incredible value prop. Number three, are you helping agents execute their new value prop? So, I mean, lender marketing platform, mortgage coach, you know, help them create it and communicate it, help them execute it. And then my number four is, guys, this is huge. Are you, with this NAR settlement, on the other side of it, a bigger part of their value prop? And, and are you actually built into their presentation? And by the way, don't just go to be built into their buyer agent presentation, like be built into the listing presentation. Like this is the opportunity for lenders to become more valuable to, to you as a mortgage coach, to be seen as a more valuable partner. So you can recruit partnerships and you can get more business. So huge, huge, huge opportunity. Deb, I'm going to have you go last um, and do the whole win by noon, take action. Tim, any closing thoughts you have as we go into wrap up mode here? I feel like agents are looking for partners to help them understand what's going on and how you can partner with them to be successful, right? Like Dave's been saying it for weeks now, months now, that this is the best opportunity for us to engage those conversations, have value, show them how you're going to help them with their clients to keep the momentum of the sale moving forward, to strategize, to put it together, how to actually put the numbers in front of them so clients can see it. Clients are very visual. That's why Mortgage Coach works so well. They can see it. They understand it. They can make it happen. So just go talk to your, your agent partners. Ask them how NAR is going to impact them. Ask them, have you considered what's going to impact your income if you can't get this put together uh, and just be valuable? I think it's it's a golden opportunity out there. Um, Scott, any closing thoughts in a minute or less? Yeah, and I think my goal is simple. Just my seat and how I want to help is we have great leaders on this platform. Tremendous from, you know, the nerd to Jeremy to Dan to Daniel to all of that. But my goal is to take all of that knowledge in Dave's TCAs and bring it all together and then finish it and then to be able to present it. Because I think, you know, as we're building here and we're gonna have a very active July is we're gonna learn all the strategies, the tips, the tricks or the scripts, all of that stuff, but that's not gonna help you get into that living room and convert. You need to package this and present it efficiently. And that's kind of my goal with Lender Marketing Platform is bring all your assets together and present and convert. Yeah. And Tim, as you prepare for that next call that we're going to do, 
um, you know, you're with Neo, so you guys have the entire uh, Trust Engine platform. You've you've got the 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 new Trust Engine app that I know you're you have downloaded. and You're going to start working with. Let's let's try to bring the whole suite that you're you're playing with into the next call, and I'm going to hand it to you, uh, Deborah, to close us out, win by noon style. I mean, just watching this with Tim, I would hate to be in his market because it would feel like you're you're showing up to a knife fight and Tim has a gun. So guys, this is what you're up against. And it, it made me think about, you know, the Summer Olympics are almost here. And you think about when was the last time the Summer Olympics was here, was, was four years ago, 2020. And so we're at that point where it's like, this is like Hunger Games. It's the Olympics. It's the best of the best. You're fighting for that world champion status. And if you're going up against Tim, what do you have in your toolbox to prove and to have evidence of how you're the MVP, not the most valuable player, but most valuable partner? Have you practiced and articulated what you're going to say? Because as Phil would say, the worst time to think about what you're going to say is in the moment. But I, I personally feel like a lot of times we get insecure about sharing our value when we know that we don't execute our value. We don't have evidence or the stories that prove how we help more offers get accepted or how you can get higher commissions if they partner with you. Because we know at the end of the day, that's what partners care about. Like they want to sell or buy more homes and they want to make as much money as possible while having raving referrals. So how do you do that? And I don't, I don't know how else you would compete against Tim because he's poised, he's polished, he knows how to articulate the value. There's evidence to support it. He clearly communicates it through technology. So guys, it's time to up our game. Put in the work, do the work before the work. Scott, you want to add one more thing? No, that's spot oh. on. Keep going, keep going. I thought, I thought you did this. So for those of you, because some of you asked in the chat, how do you schedule a demo or even check out Lender Marketing Platform? I did put that in the chat as well, or you could go to Lender Marketing um, and also check out the website. But, um, you know, as always, thank you, Tim and Scott. And guys, take action. Rewatch this video, take notes, and execute on your calls so you can start winning with your partners. Let's go. Thank you, guys. Tim, thank you. I owe you a Starbucks gift card. Got to keep it RESPA compliant. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, guys. Happy. Thank you so much, Mortgage Coach. It's been very valuable to me. See you guys. Thanks, Deb.